reach of like a smaller Lucina. There's like a lot of weird things that Greninja has that's exclusive to him. That's properties of other strong characters, and they find themselves in this matchup against Pokemon Trainer, where because it's such a dynamic matchup, it's gonna be really interesting to see how Beast adapts throughout the various Pokemon that he needs to use. Of course, starting off with Squirtle, Pokemon Stadium 2. We're well, starting I, off with this water type battle right here. I like it. One interesting look, just a little fun fact to share because this doesn't happen often. Squirtle side B, the withdrawal, it's stopped by water based moves. Is it? Yes. It, it won't put him into the like 70 some odd frames of free fall if you step on him. Oh, yeah, the puzzle. But it'll just stop him. That's a little, that's a little, that's a little fun. A little, a little fun fact. Fun facts with Not Hangman. Not as fun as that stock, Fun facts though. with Hangman. You can follow him on Twitter for these fun <laughs> facts right here every day. But right now, Elu and Beast. Beast, as we're talking, as we're joking around a little, I was already taking the first stock off of Elu. And Elu now trying to play a little grass, trying to edge guard a little bit, but he's able to make it back. But Elu, once again, immediately sending him off that long range of Ivy, though. He's easily able to make it back. However, one thing that I'm concerned about is if Elu starts to get bold off stage, he could intercept the Vine with recovery. It's definitely possible. And in general, I feel like Greninja has the tools needed to fight all of the Pokemon from Trainer off the stage. Charizard's coming up to the bat as we start the first stock. And I feel like this is actually not that terrible of a situation for Beast. He's got decent reaching moves, heavy hitting, which is gonna matter if you're trying to catch Greninja, which is a battle in its own right. Right now, Beast already switching back to the Squirtle at such a low percent, 15. A little harder to hit this character, obviously, and a little lighter, but can rack up damage pretty quick like that. And already, Elu down to his last stock after one little jab lock. That's all it took. Yeah, everybody sleeps on Squirtle because Ivysaur is kind of dope, and Charizard is a dope, but <laughs> Squirtle is able to just pull out so many nasty things. Oh, absolutely. And right now, Elu getting pushed off the stage with that water gun, able to make it back. The Beast doing a really good job of just keeping pressure on stage. I actually like that Beast is sticking towards Squirtle a bit more in this matchup as opposed to Ivysaur. Well, Ivysaur is, of course, the you know the cut and dry, get your hit confirmed, get your kill. It's what the character's there for. Squirtle, I think, is really good for being able to box. And oh my god, the <laughs> Flare Blitz just hitting. <laughs> with the, the dash hit, too? All right, buddy. You got it. This is, the, oh. this is the cleanest we've ever seen a Charizard. And there's that back air, and that's going to do it. And game one going to Beast. We, we saw some decent stuff coming out first there, but Beast easily able to just come back and say, this is my yard, this is my territory, my region, and Beast taking the first game. He's one of the favorites to defend the house tonight, so I'm actually really curious to like see how he manages in this loser's bracket, which is slowly developing to being just a Shark Tank of talent. Going into game two right now, Elu sticking with Greninja for obvious reasons. I don't think he needs to switch. I think this is the character. I think this is the answer. Going to town and city, though, instead of Pokemon Stadium. How do you think this benefits Greninja here, Hangman? I think that Greninja has the mobility options that he doesn't have to worry about how big the stage is. And in reality, Greninja isn't struggling to kill. It's just get that hit confirmed. Like, net what you have to. Like, And he's also able to win the zoning war where it's necessary because Water Shuriken is such a good projectile. Nonetheless, though, it's not going to help you off stage because you're constantly getting blocked out from being able to fight at all. Because this Squirtle from Beast has been doing such a good job of forcing this battle to be nearly just the ledge. Back here coming out from Beast, landing with Squirtle once again. Only at 43% on Elu at a massive 113 now. And really, there's no reason to switch to this Ivy right now. This is something where Beast is just super comfortable switching. At 60%, now I would switch to the Ivy. Yeah, that's another thing that Beast has to look out for. I feel like as far as like the boxing game is concerned, he's got that down pat with Squirtle. He's building the damage, no problem. But outside of his rare situations, the kills have to find themselves when fighting Greninja. Ivysaur, though, he just has to secure his function if he's allowed to actually play the game. Elo finally getting a chance to smother Beast, takes a stock, takes a bit of a lead here in game two. Yeah, that down tilt up smash gonna do it. Beast using the up B in neutral, trying to get away, but that free fall led to just even more damage for Elu. Let's see what that up smash is Beast right now. Beast on the defensive a little bit. Charles out a gigantic hitbox that Greninja will have no trouble hitting, but there's that forward tilt. Just barely living as Elu and be switching back to Squirtle now at 52. Back there, yeah, yeet. Yep. Get him out of here. Easy. 
All right, now it's, once again, we find ourselves in a similar situation. Halo just trying to break off the pressure. I like the fact that he's constantly using down tilt to try and sweep. It's a premier tool of Greninja, but it's working super well in this particular matchup because every time Beast tries to get something going, if it's not an aerial that's not really working coming in on shields, it's a lot of those jabs, the down tilts, Squirtle itself being very low to the ground. You need those low profiling tools to at least stay even in the fight. Beast just trying to look for something here. Both backing off of each other, waiting just for someone to do something here. Yo, bro, did you Beast see that Greninja can run right under the short hop razor? <laughs> <laughs> it's good Greninja's so run is there. so low. It's crazy, dude. Right now, Elu on the ledge, trying to find some sort of advantage, but Beast doing a good job. And finally, Elu gets some some sort of advantage right here. Ooh! Far off stage, but get able to get back. There's that up air, though. Super dangerous. Oh, there's that switch, the invincibility on the Pokemon switch right there from Beast. Neutral coming out, trying to look for something. Wow, the trade right there. The look at the armor on that flight. That was like, another God damn. Game. And right now, Beast with the lead, but at 140, again, Jojo, this gigantic uh, character, and that's easily going to kill it. And right now, we're down to one stock apiece in this game, too, here for losers top 16. Now, using the up to get away, space out himself a little more onto the other side of the stage. But Beast just racking up some damage right now with these aerials here. That, there's that two frame. Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh my god. I feel like it's been a while since we've seen Greninja get gifts like that, but if any Pokemon's gonna do it, this is Squirtle. He was like swan diving too when he got put into the, when he got put into free fall. You're right. He's so graceful. Like look at this. He he's like. Whee! I will remember you. But Beast, he's uh, able to take game two and moving on now 2-0 in this losing top 16. This is Elu's last chance to stay alive. He cannot lose another game here. Going back to town and city though. I feel like the town pick is perfectly fine. There wasn't any particular. Like, reason it didn't work out. I think it's really just a matter of the players at hand. Like, Beast has just been playing really well. He's been playing well with all of his uh, Pokemon. And I feel like Squirtle's carrying a lot of the weight here, too. Squirtle himself, fairly swift. Bit of a sneaky character, similar to Greninja. And the fact that he's so confidently boxing with Elu at every chance he has, like, it doesn't give Elu the opportunity to really play a runaway game. Because Squirtle's just right there. Elu coming in with these up airs just so deadly, especially on such a light character like Squirtle, and just this damage racking up, and the switch to Ivy was inevitable at this point, basically. Coming like, down with something, trying to get him up top, but isn't able to get it. Sending him far off. Whoa, there's that Razor Leaf. And gets yeah. it. Misses the recovery with Ivy, but easily able to get back with Charizard. Yeah, that little bit of a flub, though, I feel like gave Elo a little bit of time to compose himself as we come into the next stock. Like, he had time to get off the Angel platform, get himself in position, figure out what he's going to do, but Beast is an animal! Oh. My. God. Bruh. That's not working on Elu, boy. Elu I mean, ain't falling for that. Like, yeah, you're up 2-0, but Elu's no slouch. You don't get What's up respect on my man's name? Oh, my God. Either way, Elu now. I would be a little mad, and Elu taking out his aggression right on him. Yo, Elu is pissed. <laughs> you don't get. All right, Elu sees Beast trying to get nasty. We're nasty out here too. Squirtle into those like impossible positions to survive. Gets knocked out. Elu taking a bit of a lead here, and I hope he keeps playing with this fervor because this is kind of nice. That was amazing play coming out from Elu right there, and right now Beast is a little mad himself here, <laughs> taking out a little aggression. Why don't you? Just okay. like that, and we're okay. back to basically even. Disrespect after disrespect after disrespect. It's a bloody battle, man. <laughs> With both players in it, though, this is kind of what I was expecting. But, like, it's not working out for Elu now. Is Elu Beast has not gotten a chance to breathe. And Beast even tried to go for the up smash there. Doesn't even try and go for the aerial confirm. Yeah, that's kind of wild. Like, up smash is so devastatingly strong with Ivysaur, but it also takes forever and a half to come out. Good job DIing away Elu there. That could have been the death of him, actually, if he wasn't too careful. There's that landing there that's so deadly. So safe. Right now, we're seeing a bunch of pummels. No throw opportunity. 
just go for the damage. I actually think that was pretty smart from Beast because now he just needs to fish around for some sort of an aerial. Forward air will act as his confirm. Down air and up air could potentially kill. But with Charizard on board, I don't know about this in this high tension situation. There's a little bit of a heavy boy right here. Oh, never mind. And that's just one yeet. Not going to do it just yet, though. What are we going to see here coming out? Forward, forward air. I do like that Beast is just trying to space out with his low committal options, but like, can we not just swing? Can we that's just dunk? It, yeah. That's going to do it. The dunk right there. And Beast taking it. Three. Oh, that game three, man, was all I wanted to see out of this That was set. the slobber knocker I was looking for. <laughs> That's what I'm trying oh, to see. Oh, man, that was amazing. I feel like not a lot of people outside of Tri-State know that Elu's really nice. Elu is incredibly nice. You may not see him on the PR right now, but basically, I think most of our players that aren't on this PR can beat some PR players. I'm just saying. That's, I'm just that saying. Is, I'm just that's saying. just how Tri-State works. That's just